FK Tuna Development. So I have something a little bit interesting for you Luke, today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install the rockers on your Civic Type R cylinder head. Um, for those of you who uh, may or may not be building your own cars, uh, this will just give you a couple of hints on a couple things that I come across that make it a little bit easier to build a cylinder head. Uh, obviously labeling, bagging, and organizing is probably the biggest thing. Don't forget, hit the like, subscribe, pass the message on. Uh, go to my webpage, www.fktd.com. Check it out. I got email tuning services amongst other uh, Civic Type R products. We have our own unique injector. Check it out. Um, it's the best injector you can actually buy at this point in time, running on the OEM ECU on either K-Tuner or Honda. Now, back to the point. So this is the rocker shaft. But if this is not the arm, this is the actual uh, basically called pipe. It's a hollow tube here that actually holds the rockers in place. So this shaft, okay, this all the rockers sit on this, and then the camshaft pushes on the rockers. We'll get before we get ahead of ourselves. This locating pin, this is important. So this is the cylinder head. This is the side where the passenger, basically, I'm mean, not the passenger, the driver's side is. So this is cylinder number four. It's the closest to the transmission. So this shaft has to go in from this side. I mean, theoretically, you can put it from the side. It's just a lot easier. These little pins actually get filled with oil. They, as you can see here, where these lines are, these are just pressure marks where it's actually held in, and the oil gets fed in through here and then in through the rockers. And when oil is directed through the rocker in such a fashion, VTEC is activated. I'll show you in a little bit how that's actually done in, in this particular application. Um, the VTEC is pretty much done the same way across the board for Hondas. There are other companies do it slightly different. So uh, you can't actually put this in wrong. And if you do happen to get the bolt in, my God, you have done some damage to your cylinder head. So the actual bolt that holds it in is this bolt right here. Uh, and you can see that this has got a curved edge here. And it sits and it rests on top of this and it gets bolted in. But if you notice, it can, it's offset. This isn't square in center of relation. So this hole is also offset. So you face this hole so that the smaller side or thinner portion of it is towards the front of the front or by the exhaust manifold. So this way you can bolt it in. That's the proper location in order to bolt it in. Um, so otherwise uh, you can do some serious damage if you, if you do not do this correctly. So I'm gonna push this forward and show you guys that hole so sorry for the crude video but if you i know this might be difficult to see and i apologize for that um yeah i can't really see it in the video but i can continue on to show you how to install these rockers so i've already done one here and this was what i was talking about with the rocker shaft um, this should slide freely. If it's not, you need to clean this up, check for debris, and check for anything else that can possibly stop this from going together freely. You shouldn't be fighting this. You absolutely should not be hammering this in or out. Maybe get a few very light taps to get it moving. So, let me get some to, to the basics of the parts. I always label my bags when I take engines apart and I label them one, two, three, and four, although that's really not needed in this scenario. Um, it, it, um, honestly, when it comes on to rockers, if you've got enough wear where you have to label them cylinder to cylinder, I, I think it's about time for new rocker shafts and uh, rockers. So instead, we used to, used to use like an LMA, or, um, and basically that was basically to stabilize the center here. That center, the center, let me show this center, basically this free floats until VTEC kicks in. So I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. So let me move my camera over here. And sorry, guys, get the guys, gals, get this out of the way and show you some of the small bits. So inside the center, we just have a basically floating pin in the middle. Okay, and then going towards, and if we're going to, I already pre-lubed it, so this one really doesn't want to come out. But this is the one that actually activates the VTEC. So probably be simple. Kind of easy to show you, uh, in a sense. Yeah, see, there's an air pass the way through here. Let me see if I can get it into the right one. Oh. Yeah, that fired it across the room. So you get the idea. Basically, oil pressurizes through this little galleyway, and it comes back out here. So 
that's what that's for. This actually right here, the other, the other hole is for rocker. Basically, this is for the roller, the other hole. So this hole you find inside here in this, in this actual one. Now this one is labeled FP, um, and this one is labeled FS. Now, I haven't seemed to find any real correlation. Uh, one is 2-1, one, one is 2-2, two and this is the one in the middle, and it is labeled just F. So, uh, I'd assume that FP stands for pressure, and I'm not sure what the heck FS stands for. So, another thing is you're going to want to constantly keep your hands clean. So, I got oil and debris and stuff on my hands right now, so I'm wiping them off. I absolutely can't stress this enough when you're assembling an engine. Clean, clean, and clean again. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you clean, but it matters if you get dirt in it one time. You can clean it a thousand times and that's okay. So let's start with the actual first portion. If you notice, there's four shims here. These shims go in between each, each rocker. So these shims are you won't find in previous generations in the B series. Uh, you won't find these shims. Now all these particular uh, rod pieces are a specific size. So if you put them in in the wrong order, they won't go in. So what you're going to find is the actual spring-loaded one goes into this assembly here, labeled uh, FS. Now, when you put these in, this one, into this, so you always want to put some sort of engine assembly. And like I said, I, I like that the driven engine, engine assembly grease. Um, and it does dissolve well with oil, but as you can see here, this wants to push out, but you can see it actually pushes in further. So what happens is the other one pushes out and then pushes in, and that basically locks the pins together. So I'm going to take this and put some assembly grease on there. You don't need much with this engine assembly grease. This stuff works great. And this replaces your traditional LMA. This doesn't have any sort of hydraulic load to it. So, uh, but I do, you can see the resting on it can put, create a wear mark. I still happen to lube this up before I put it in, just because it's for good measure. Now, install, obviously, <laughs> throw the, what would have been the LMA first. Even though I've going to, I've cleaned these and cleaned these and cleaned these, uh, because I took it back apart for this demonstration, I'm still going to once again, clean it again. Uh, the same thing went for these actual rockers, which I've already cleaned. Now, being I'm even though there's grease, some grease on here, I'm still right before I put this rocker on. I'm going to put some more grease on. Assemble this up, roller upward. The roller is what rides on the cam. Then, after you've done that, remember put that shim first. Okay, so don't forget these shims. That's very important. You don't forget the shims. That creates an issue. I uh, then. Push the rocker shaft through a little bit more, and then I proceed to do the same thing I just did after I put the shim on, put the center rocker shaft roller roller up, and I put that in, and then now I have the for both the first and middle rocker assembly piece. Now the last part, uh, again, don't forget, you know, a uh, little bit, a little bit of. Engine assembly loop goes a long way. Keeping your hands clean and everything else goes even further. Uh, so I put the washer on. And this work gets a little bit difficult sometimes. Uh, so the spring load wants to push this rocker, this actual rocker pin out. That's if it's in alignment with it. If not, it actually sometimes wants to push the whole rocker over. So this becomes a little bit difficult. This is where it becomes a little bit tough. So what I like to do is I'll actually kind of guide that washer in you know spacer and probably the most difficult part is going to be the end here where you're trying to get through that last one so to check alignment uh you just push the rocket through and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna gradually pull this back and then i'm gonna put just a very light pressure so that this washer sits up and i'm going to just gently push it down while keeping some pressure on the rod and kind of twisting at the same time now you, if you can fit your finger on the other side, sometimes this helps, but uh, realistically, this just is a little bit on the tedious and the tough side to do. Because um, the, the alignment has to be like spot on. And once you have it, there you go. The rocker shaft is now through, and that's how you install the rockers. 
So what will happen when VTEC activates, this pin gets pushed out, and if I push on this pin, right, you can see that they are now locked together. So when this pin pushes out, it pushes into this one, and this is what activates your VTEC. So, and as you can see, this, this, this spring-loaded mechanism here, you can see the way it is now that this one cannot be pressed inward this direction, so it will free float until the actual uh, VTEC engages. Now, um, these should be free moving, they shouldn't be binded, they should be very easy to move around. And once you're done, it's always a good idea, tilt your rockers back, a little bit of engine assembly or grease uh, on, on where the valve hits. This way during, during your break, during your startup. And uh, I've already pushed grease into the bearings for the engine assembly grease. Don't use household grease. Don't use regular oil. Uh, use engine assembly lube or use, uh, like I'm using the engine assembly grease. If you use regular oil and it happens to sit, the oil just goes and falls off the parts. You know, um, although Luke, even Lucas is sticky, if you put a drop of Lucas on top of a camshaft, let it sit there for a week, it's just going to drip off eventually. This stuff doesn't budge. So, this is what I recommend that you would use for your cylinder heads. You want a little bit extra thickness there. Uh, like I said, the cam's going to put, be putting pressure on the valve springs and so on and so forth, you know, the rockers. Um, you want that to be well lubricated. It's not going to affect VTEC. I recommend that if you, when you do use a break-in oil, don't use a zinc additive. That crap doesn't work. You're mixing two products that don't belong together. You don't use, when you're breaking an engine in, you also don't use synthetic. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that, especially in high performance motors. Uh, you don't use the synthetic because you need to be able to one, seat the rings. Two, the other reason you don't use synthetic is because if you're using a high zinc oil, the synthetic prevents the zinc from creating the sacrificial layer. So I've done a lot of research on this and, I've, and, and this is bound to be true. Now you can break it in with a high zinc oil and then move on to a standard synthetic. But I highly suggest in a performance application like this, you use a high zinc break-in oil that is absolutely specific. So thanks again so much to everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this is helpful to you uh, in the future. More videos to come. Uh, I don't know how much I'll do as far as the, the technical stuff. I don't always quite have the time. But I figured I'd show everybody this video. Uh, and that it would be good reference for people assembling their engines in case they forgot. Thanks again so much for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my webpage, www.fktv.com. Hit the contact button if you need anything, it goes right to my email. Thank you so much, everybody.